So now we've seen some different container classes in C++, right? We've talked about vector, we've talked about list, we've talked about forward list. And each of these classes defines something called an iterator. And that's what we're going to talk about in this lecture. So an iterator is kind of the link between a container and algorithms. So you can imagine that there are algorithms that make sense on any of these different uh, containers, right? Uh, say that we want to find an element in the container. That makes sense whether we're talking about a vector, a list, a forward list. And the idea is we don't want to have to write a separate algorithm for each different container. And iterators are what's going to allow us to, to do that, to just have kind of a generic algorithm that's going to be able to work for any container that supports an iterator. Okay, so let's look at that in more detail. So I'm going to look at a particular example here. So the algorithm that we're going to look at is the find algorithm. So say that we're given an array and we're given a particular value. We want to see if that array contains the value. Okay, and if it contains the value, then we want to return a pointer to the first occurrence of that value in the array. So that's the problem. And I'm going to generalize the problem a little bit. Okay, so we're actually going to just search for the value within a specified range of the array. And that range of the array is going to be specified by two pointers, which we call first and last. And these two pointers define uh, what we're going to call a half open range. So what that means is that the values, the part of the array that we're interested in is starting at what's pointed to by first, and it goes up to but does not include last. Okay, so this is called a half open range, and this is used all the time in C++. So again, the range is specified by first and last, and the range we're interested in starts at first and goes up to, but does not include last. So what's pointed to by last is not actually part of the range. Okay, so that's the problem. Um, so here's how we could write a, an algorithm to for find. Um, so we just have a, a pointer variable here called PTR. We initialize that to first, and we have a for loop where we increment this pointer um, until it gets to last. And uh, as we increment it, we just check. So we dereference the pointer, check if the value that it's pointed to at that time is equal to value. If it is, then we return the pointer. Otherwise, when the for loop ends, then point the pointer is equal to last, and we return last. Okay, so last here, since it's not part of the range, it serves as like a sentinel value. So if the return value is equal to last, we know that means that the value we are searching for uh, was not present in the array, in the range that we are looking at. Okay? Okay, so this is a very natural algorithm, right? We just want to find a value in an array. And this makes sense you know, also in a vector, in a list, in a forward list. So the question arises, you know, do I have to write this algorithm separately for each of those containers? And you can imagine if you're designing the standard library, the problem that this presents, right? The standard library is full of algorithms. It's full of containers. So do we really want to write a different version of every algorithm for every single different container, right? That would be a lot of work. And since these algorithms are largely the same, uh, you know, it'd be a lot of, of repeated code. It doesn't seem very elegant, okay? So in particular, if we had to do that, if we had m algorithms and n containers, then we'd have to write m times n different programs. Okay, so iterators uh, 
enable us to not have to do that. Okay. So let's see the, the concept that led to iterators. So this is kind of the idea of, of generic programming. Okay. So we can start with a concrete algorithm, right? We have this concrete algorithm for find in, a, in an array. And let's just examine this algorithm and let's say, okay, what makes this algorithm work, right? What properties are we using here? What properties of pointers are we using here? And we can just kind of look through the code line by line and see what operations we're using, right? So in this, um, in this for loop, right, we are, we are incrementing the pointer. So that's, that's definitely something that we would need. We also need to check if the pointer is equal to last. So we need to be able to compare two pointers. Um, we need to check if the item pointed to by pointer is equal to the value, right? So we need to be able to dereference the pointer. And these are really the three properties of pointer that are allowing this program to work. And so once we identify those fundamental properties that the algorithm is based on, then we try to generalize the algorithm to work with any type that can support those properties. And I think this kind of thinking is what really led to the idea of, of iterators. And iterator is like a generalized pointer. So it's able to support all those operations that we found that we needed on the last slide, right? Being able to increment, to go to the next element, uh, you know, comparison uh, for equality, checking if, if two pointers are equal, and, uh, and dereferencing. Okay, so an iterator is going to support all those operations. And every sequence container defines an iterator. So then we can just write uh, algorithms generically in terms of these operations. And that algorithm is going to work whenever we have on any container for which we have an iterator. Okay, so that's the idea. And that kind of reduces the complexity of the code in the standard library, right? Because now, uh, for each container, we just have to implement an iterator. And then for each algorithm, we just write the algorithm generically in terms of iterators, OK? So th these iterators are kind of the very important link between algorithms and containers in C++. Now, there is one slight hiccup in this picture. So it's kind of a, a founding principle of C++ that you don't want to pay any performance price for something that you don't need. Okay, so if we just wrote, you know, one version of, of sort in terms of iterators, then we might be paying a price in performance uh, you know, when we run that sort on vector compared to our forward list. Okay, and, and why is that? Well, basically, in a forward list, right, in a singly linked list, the way that we can access the elements is different than the way that we can access elements in a vector, right? So in a vector, we have random access to the elements. We can basically quickly move to any element in the vector. Whereas in a singly, list, singly linked list, we can only quickly move from one element to the next element. Okay? So the slight hiccup in the picture is that um, in C++, there are actually different kinds of iterators depending on what operations they can implement. So a singly linked list is going to implement something called a forward iterator. So basically, you can only increment the iterator. You can't decrement the iterator and you cannot you know, jump to any position in the list. In a doubly linked list, that implements something called a bidirectional iterator. So there we can increment the iterator or decrement the iterator. And, and then a vector uh, implements a random access iterator. Okay, so this iterator, we can actually add a value to it and um, move to the iterator you know, incremented by that value. Okay, so there's kind of different 
classes of iterators. And we have to write each algorithm uh, for each class of iterators. Okay. Um, so, but it still kind of reduces the complexity compared to writing an algorithm for every single different container. Okay, so now let's talk about how to use iterators and um, kind of some conventions for how they're used in, in, in the standard library. Okay, so like our example of the find algorithm, it's very, very common in the standard library for an algorithm to work on a range of elements in a container. And this range is going to be specified by two iterators. And again, these two iterators specify what we call a half open interval. So the interval that you're actually going to be working on begins at first and goes up to, but does not include last. Okay, so last points to a value that is not part of the range. And that's again important because then you can use last as a sentinel value. You know, if an item is not found, for example, then you can return last to indicate that the value was not found. And every sequence container also provides two member functions that return iterators, and that's begin and end. So begin is an iterator that points to the first item in the container, and end is a sentinel value that is not part of the container. Okay, so it's, it's often said that end points to one beyond the last item in the list. And, you know, that makes sense for, for, for a vector, since a vector, the elements are sitting there contiguously in memory. So we can talk about the memory location, you know, one beyond the last item in the vector. But I don't think it really makes sense when you're talking about a list, right? Because in a list, um, the elements in the list can be at you know various locations in memory. They don't have to be contiguous at all. So there it's not really clear what one beyond the end means. So I just like to think of end as a sentinel value. It, it points to something that is not part of the container. So in particular, you never want to dereference end. Okay, so that that is un, undefined behavior because we don't really know what the value is that that end points to. It's some part of memory that that we don't own. So if we want uh, an algorithm to work on the entire say vector, um, then that's specified by the half open range. That's you know, from begin to end, right? So it starts at begin and goes up to, but does not include end. So the example that we started out with at the very beginning of this lecture, so the find function, this actually is a function in the standard library. And you use it in terms of iterators, you know, very similarly to what we designed in terms of pointers at the beginning. So here I have a list. Uh, the elements are one, two, three, four, and I want to search for three in this list. Okay, and then I want to search for that in the entire list. So then I can just call find. The first argument is the beginning of the list, the second argument is the end of the list, and then the third argument is you know the value I'm searching for, so in this case three. And this will return an iterator that points to the first occurrence of three in the list. Okay. Uh, another way that we can use iterators is to, you know, iterate through a container. So here's kind of the standard idiom for iterating through a container. Uh, so I have this variable it. So here you can see the full type, right? It's a standard list of ints colon colon iterator. And we initialize that to begin and go until it uh, becomes equal to end and just increment it at each loop. And here I'm just printing out the values of the list. So I can access a value pointed to by an iterator with the uh, star. So just like a pointer. So this syntax was really adopted from you know, the syntax for, for pointers. So the star it is the value pointed to by the iterator it. 
so some remarks on this um, this code here. So you can use the same idiom for any other sequence container. So one thing to note is that iterates for list do not support comparison. Okay, so you cannot check if one iterator is less than another one. Whereas an iterator for a vector does support comparison. So to kind of make this code more generic, uh, instead of saying, that's why I've said it not equal to the list.end, rather than saying it less than list.end. So you could use that syntax with a vector, but not with a list. Um, also, in this example, I wrote out the full type of the iterator just so that you could see what it looks like. But if I was writing this code myself, uh, I would just put auto here, right? So this is a nice place where you can put auto uh, just to save yourself typing out that long type name of the iterator. So something else I wanted to mention, uh, you can also use iterators to iterate backwards over a container. So this is a surprisingly useful thing to do. I use this quite often. Uh, and this is implemented with something that's called a reverse iterator. Okay, um, but it's a really makes the syntax really nice so that uh, it looks almost the same as iterating forward over a container. So the only difference is that instead of using begin, we use this function here called rbegin. So it's like the reverse begin. Okay, so in this case, it is going to be a, a reverse iterator. It's initialized to the reverse begin. And we keep going until it's, it's equal until the reverse end. And then note that again, we're just incrementing the iterator. Okay, so we're not decrementing it, we're incrementing it. So the syntax looks exactly the same as iterating forwards, except that instead of begin and end, we use r begin and r end. Okay, and it is now a, a reverse iterator. Okay, so this is a really uh, useful syntax when you want to iterate backwards over a container.